and welcome to the Confident Healer podcast, YouTube version. I'm your hostess, Sharmila Mali. I'm also the creator of my nine month Confident Healer Reiki training program. I hope you enjoy today's episode. And please, as always, like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Hello, and welcome to the Confident Healer podcast. I'm Sharmila Mali, your hostess and founder of the nine month Confident Healer Reiki training program. So today I have the pleasure of talking with a very impressive and a wonderful man. He's dedicated his life to serving people in his community, especially as president and headmaster for the Mountain Institute for Kung Fu and Tai Chi, a nonprofit organization in Ojai, California. They provide instruction to martial arts students from all walks of life, from at-risk youths to seniors and rehabilitation facilities and everyone in between. He describes the study of traditional Chinese martial arts as learning to work hard, achieving peaceful confidence and being part of a community. The Ojai Kung Fu Club community inspires the student to be good citizens, virtuous, fulfilled and engaged in their well-being. His martial arts studies began in earnest in the late 70s when he was stationed at Kun San Air Force Base in Korea. In 2010, he was promoted to the rank of master, eighth degree, by the Hangling Do Federation. His title of Sigong means teacher of teachers. He has studied various martial arts systems, including Shotokan Karate, Taekwondo, Bak Shaolin Eagle Claw, Wing Chun, and familiarized himself with all the important movements in the martial arts, such as kickboxing and mixed martial arts. He co-wrote and produced self-defense for everyone video program. His classes currently held at the Ojai Recreation Center. And like I said, this amazing man also holds a PhD in organizational transformational studies from the Adiza's Graduate School and a master's in technology management from Pepperdine University. Without further ado, please welcome with a big hug to the Confident Healer podcast, Sifu Daryl Gooden. Yay! Thank you, Shamela. Thank you so much, Shamela. Yes, uh, my pleasure to be here. So I'm excited about this and uh, honored that uh, I would be on your show. You know, I, I've tracked you since we first met over a decade ago, and I realized your practice has stayed intact. And I just sort of keep up with you. So it was great that uh, I get this opportunity to spend a little bit more time with you. So oh, yeah, absolutely. I was. Uh, up again. Yeah, I'm so I know because it's been a while. I hadn't, mm -hmm. you know, since lockdown, I hadn't seen you. Um, and so this whole thing came about because we were standing in line at getting breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. A couple oh, of weeks good. ago in the morning. Yeah. So I just love that, like, um, uh, the serendipity of it. And then you were talking to me about, um, your meditation practice, about heartfulness, about, you know, and visiting, going back into, going back to India to visit and visit mm -hmm. the, the organization there. And so, and so here we are on, on the Confident Healer podcast. So yeah, as you just have such an interesting, uh, when I met you, we met through um, some event that was happening, some healing event, and right. your colleague, Sifu Tom, who is no longer with us, was mm -hmm. there. And you were there and you were both, um, you know, we're talking about Kung Fu and, and then I learned about, you know, the, the club um, at, the, at the rec center in Ojai. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's just fascinating because of because of your background in, you know, martial arts has always been a theme, and it seems like you know meditation and just um, heartfulness, not mindfulness, mm -hmm. but heartfulness has just been a, just is, is is a part of who you are. So how did you? I just want like, kind of want to talk about the martial arts piece first. Okay. Um, how? what so what just being just being in korea and stationed there just got you interested in in the art form well you know uh i you know i go back i mean when i was uh, a kid growing up in los angeles you know where everybody was into bruce lee <laughs> now i don't i don't know where the generation today is but you probably know who bruce lee is you know uh and so i was inspired by watching those movies from the 70s and early 80s watching kung fu movies. So I was always interested in that. And when I had the opportunity when I was in the military um, uh, to actually practice it, I took advantage of it. And and I stayed with it ever since, you know. Uh, it's just a part of my life that I would tell you, 
martial arts has been a part of my life throughout my life, you know, from the early ages of 12 years old, you know. And so uh, I would say from the fact that I've worked many years in organizational development, I'm, the man that, who met me saw I was a black belt and said, oh, I'd like to get into martial arts. I told him, well, you hire me and I will get you a black belt. And I did. <laughs> we've been friends ever since. It's been 35 years we've been friends, you know. So, so basically, martial arts is a way of life. And I would tell you about martial arts, and I would love to talk more if we have enough time to uh, about heartfulness, because it's really, really important for all aspects of life. And and keeping with the the theme of your program, health, I, I, all these things touch upon that. But in martial arts, what I practice is, of course, is useful for what I call peaceful confidence. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, it's a good means by which to be a part of a community. It's a bit of a, a you know. I never joined a fraternity in college or anything like that, but it has that fraternity sorority kind of a thing. The thing about Kung Fu that I like so well in this day and age is that many of the heroes in Kung Fu and heroines are from the inception of Kung Fu have been men and women, nuns and, and priests from the Shaolin Temple is the, the story goes, uh, have been responsible for promulgating the health benefits of martial arts in general, but Kung Fu more specifically. In fact, Kung Fu was founded, at least Southern Shaolin, which is part of what I practice, was founded by uh, uh, the Buddhist monk that went to India, excuse me, that came from India to go to China to teach Zen Buddhism and mm. found that his students just couldn't hang. They couldn't <laughs> deal with the meditative practice. So he had to put them into practice to train them so that their bodies could take the demand of the meditation itself. And, and that's one of the origins of uh, Southern, Southern Shaolin anyway. And so I've been practicing for over, over 30 years. It's very much a part of my life. It's the community I belong to. And it's given me the opportunity to travel the world. I've been to, to, to China in comp competitions with young people. I bring a team over there. I've been to Korea practicing. And so it's just a part of my life and probably will be a part of my life forevermore. I don't, in Kung Fu, you don't need a ball. You don't need a bat. You don't need anything. You just need your body and the space to make some movements. Mm, so, mm. so my Kung Fu is, uh, yeah, peaceful confidence, part of a community. And it, 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 there's this thought in martial arts, particularly in Kung Fu, of the superior person, which is to say you need to be well-versed in music, well-read. You ought to be a person who have somewhat of a, healing art in and of itself a real kung fu master would also be a practitioner of chinese medicine mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the real masterful level so for me i will attend seminars on health and keep track of things like that or listen to a book or something but i'm not actually a chinese medicine uh, practitioner but i appreciate it and so in this modern day and age being read up on all the means by which kung fu ought to contribute to one's life i avail myself to mm. you know and so, and, and share it with the students. They're really, really good students in Ohio. Really good. And we have students around the world, not around the world, but mostly in the United States. And we stay in touch. It's sort of a loose confederation, if you will. Wow. Wow. So that's my martial arts. Yeah. That, well, it's, that's it's interesting um, when you talk. So what is, what is peaceful confidence? So, so peaceful confidence, a good question. I never thought about it as a question, but peaceful confidence is as you get to center yourself, it's down to the point of when you're centered, and I learned this from a Aikido master, you know, because I, I've always admired Aikido. I love all the martial arts, first off, uh, it, it, but each one has a different thing. Mm -hmm, and yeah. Aikido is the one that impressed me so much so because of the centering that is highly focused with them. In Aikido, they have no punches, they have no kicks, there's no offense. In their philosophical leaning, and I'm not an Aikido master by any means, but I understand enough to realize the centering is very useful because in centering, if something comes at you that seems to be a, a threat or harm to you, you simply get out of its way and mm. you help it go where it needs to go mm. so that uh, you're not harmed. And that is fundamentally based on how centered you are. So peaceful confidence is to know that I am centered comfortable in my own skin, aware of my internal well-being, 
and aware of the external forces for which I have to deal every day with. Right. Not just and external forces can mean anything, not just a fight. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or a physical fight, you know, we're defending your life more of just like and it's it, well, it's interesting too, like with your <clears throat> with the work that you did uh, with your career uh, mm -hmm. working with organizations and how that how that played a part. How did that play a part? And that must have influenced your oh. leadership style and it did, you know, my so in my work, which is doing change management with organizations, small groups, large groups. What does that mean? Change, uh, change management? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, change I, I, okay. I, I know. Cause I'm like, well, okay, so you're managing change because change is always happening. So it's always happening. Yeah. Right. So what is, yeah. yeah. So, so let me, let me, let me get more specific. Okay. okay so I want to, I want to make sure I address. How does that show up in my work? This uh, this piece of confidence, right. if you will. Yes. Is, am I tracking right? Is yes, that right? You, yes. Okay. So so where it shows up in the work, in my practice of what was called organizational change management, go into organizations, help them to deal with the external forces bringing up, impacting a group, so folks have an understanding and get clarity about how's that impacting us, and are we all on the same page? So. Organizational change management is really about constructive management of conflict. Mm. This conflict does not necessarily have to be negative, but it is energetic. You know what I'm saying? There's energy. Yes. yes. You have different interests. You have different styles. You have different intentions. And that means, I mean, people walk into a room and by themselves, not having anything to do with everyone else in the room, they walk in conflicted within themselves. So now multiply that by 25 people. Right, right. Right, okay, right. right. So this is how peaceful confidence shows up with that. Uh, there's two elements of it. One is, am I, as I am in the room charged with facilitating organizational change management, what do I have to do? I have to validate the intrinsic right for an individual, an individual to be who they are mm -hmm. in the manner they are. Just that, nothing more, nothing less. I can't put my expectations upon them. I have to, what I call, intrinsically validate another human being's right to be who they are, act the way they are. Right, so me basically m meeting them where they're at. Yeah, meeting them where they're at. Right. Right. Now, now, we have to put outside of that, you have bad actors who have ill, you know, faded intentions. And so I'm not talking about dealing with the pathologies Right. I'm telling you, the 80% of us who are just trying to work it out will show up and have some level of intrinsic validation as a person of, of goodness, so to speak. And, and so being a, a person of peaceful confidence, the ego is put in check, so to speak, and, and I'm there holding your agenda. Is that what you want? Is that what you hear? That, so it shows up like that in the room. And uh, for a facilitator who's an organizational change management person, you want to be present with those folks. Now, what that means is if you really are good at this, they are working, they are doing the work that they have to do, you're facilitating it. But at the end of the day, it may cost you something in terms of your own well being because you're putting yourself into that mm -hmm. and you're expending energy, attention, and time. Right. And uh, one of the things I know you do is Reiki. And one of the practices we had in organizational change management was the consciousness of the facilitator, change agent, so to speak, to refresh themselves. And the, what we did as a practice at the Adesis Institute was uh, we uh, availed ourselves to the uh, training in Reiki, mainly so that we could be replenished, so that we could show up the next time for a client. I mean, Wait, that's wait so at this graduate school, that's where you learned Reiki? Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's where I learned Reiki. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. if you, yeah, if you're going to be present for other people, you have to be healthy. You have to be, and, and Reiki is a self-healing almost kind of a thing. Right. I mean, right. That was my introduction to it. You know, I'm not at the level you are, but I, I got an appreciation, and and from that point on, really understood why one has to take themselves offline and re refresh and replenish. You know, so it could be vital the next time you show up for something. And and so I sort of, it's a continuum for me. 
you know, my martial arts was a very personal thing, very right. personal experience. And it give, it's given me lots of opportunities. And as I moved into the interest of organizational change management and transformation, which fascinates me, um, all these things showed up. And, and my particular practice and meditation, for instance, after the Reiki experience, you know, I was at a conference in, in Boulder, Colorado, right? I was on this panel and my part was to talk about martial arts, just like we're doing now. And why is it healthy and what's good about it for the person's personal development? On the panel with me was a guy who practiced meditation and was a yoga person who did Hatha yoga or something. It was like, that was the theme of it. You know, self wellness was the theme right. of this conference. And everybody spoke and said what they did, but the, but the meditation guy felt the need to have all of us meditate. Like, oh, I don't meditate, you know, <laughs> like this is an imposition, but, but, but I did it. It was only two minutes, you know, but that was my first introduction to meditation. And I managed to get through the two minutes of it. Fast forward four or five years after that, one of my colleagues at the Adesis Institute was a practitioner of heartfulness. And I thought, oh, that sounds good. That's not like transcendental meditation or mindfulness that everybody does and no, nothing against that. But it just struck me that heartfulness made sense because there's this, there's this, this, this dynamic, let's call it, between what is the primary organ? Is it the mind, the brain, or the heart? Well, I'm in the camp that it's the heart. And so much of what I do comes from the place of heartfulness I was truly intrigued. I said, well, yeah, okay, so what is it about? How do I kind of practice it? You know, I'm a Christian. I told the guy, I said, I'm a Christian, so I really, I'm not sure this is for me. He said, well, you don't have to forgive, you don't have to forego any of your beliefs. This is just a discipline. And for the last 14 years, you know, or so, a little bit more than that now, I've been a, a practitioner of heartfulness, at times much more engaged than others. And uh, it is a very simple practice you meditate in the morning and in the evening, and when the opportunity arises, you you go to a satsang with some like-minded people, and uh, it's very rewarding. I'll just say it like that. You know, mm. if you're pra it, it, everybody ought to be at the job of working on themselves, and they're <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's an ongoing thing, right? Right, right? And, and heartfulness. I'll tell you, heartfulness shows up for me. You know, it's, it's so strange. It's like something's going on. Like right now, I will tell you, so much is going on. It hits me. Oh, I I need I need some meditation. I just need to go gather myself and get a minute and see what's up. And uh, and that's how heartfulness shows up for me. Every time I I sort of and I know it's not the right way to do it. You should do this discipline all the time, no matter what. But at times when chi life is real challenging, you got to go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the right way. The right way is fitting it into your life, however way you can, that's what mm -hmm. to make it right for you. You show it, you know, it's a practice to you, you just show up wherever you're at. Right. Yeah. yeah what what yeah. was the, what was the technical term? The, hmm. in, you, the technical term for showing up for where the person's at. Oh, um, uh, I call it intrinsic validation. Intrinsic validation. Yeah. 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 Intrinsic yeah. validation is to accept the person where they are and just that, you know, right. It's interesting because, uh, in my travels and in the things I do, I, I would hold public workshops, uh, you know, and I held a public workshop uh, on the election day when Donald Trump was elected, right? It's so fascinating, you know, because I, so the discipline, the methodology I use in my practice of organizational change management, I've done for over 20 years, is something called spiral dynamics integral. And if you're familiar with the, the integral movement, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the integral movement, and um, so, uh, the folks at Integral, uh, they follow Ken Wilber. Are you familiar? Oh, with okay. That's why I, I was going to say, I yeah. was thinking of his face Ken, and then his name. Yeah. Okay, Ken Wilber. I'm a Ken yes. Wilber, right. Now, I had the opportunity to go to his home in uh, Boulder, Colorado, but I missed it because I, my flight, I was on one of my Kung Fu trips back in Beijing, but I missed it. But I had attended some workshops with him. And, uh, and so my discipline of spiral dynamics combined with the integral philosophy or integral psychology 
I sort of use these two, right? Uh, and one of the things that uh, I attended a World's Future Society meeting, and I was blown away by the lecture of a man named, man named Don Beck, Dr. Don Beck, who founded uh, the Spirodynamics movement. And Spirodynamics is a social psychology and it's descriptive, it's a, it's a framework that explains life and existence in terms of values. Hmm. Everyone values something for a different reason. And I won't go into the, that's a whole nother conversation, but the takeaway is that one of the things driving my interest in organizational change management was looking at the deeper things that cause people to do what it is they do and act the way they act. You could take it on the surface that it's ethnicity, color of your skin, gender, all those things are relevant. But at a deeper level, it's what Spider Dynamics explains, it's your living condition. What condition you find yourself in in life will, will manifest in what you put meaning to. For instance, if you're, if you're, if you're a very poor person living in a, a very poor country, you really don't have the luxury to think about right. what color car you want to get. You have more fundamental problems to deal with. It was very similar to the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Mm, right, right. Well, spiral dynamics is a hierarchy of values. And uh, Maslow and the contemporary of the man who actually did the research on spiral dynamics, a man named Dr. Claire Graves, who's a professor at Unity University, I think, uh, in New York, uh, Schenectady, New York. But basically, this methodology has been around for fifty years. It, it is, if you go, if you look online for spiral dynamics, you'll see all kinds of stuff on it, and it's a powerful framework for understanding reality uh, in the way people manage to go through it. Dr. Beck's work, uh, who was my mentor in this was interesting because he was the consultant who worked with Nelson Mandela and de Klerk in helping to transform South Africa from apartheid to a free democratic society wow. without a civil war, which is a big deal. Right. Look at it, a major racial civil war. Right. And, and Beck was instrumental in that. So, so that methodology informs a lot of what it is I do. And so, you know, with Kung, Kung Fu, it's very much a local practice, which is right after my family. It's my extended family of the Kung Fu community. Um, in terms of what I'm doing to heal and make a difference in the parts of society I show up in is what I think my practice of organizational change management vis-a-vis -vis spiral dynamics integral, that all kind of comes together. But, but being involved with spir spiral dynamics integral has taken me I'm plugged into a community that's called Living Cities Earth. It's a very fascinating group of people. This from around the world. We meet once a month, and there's various working groups and things like that. And so I'm fascinated by that. So yeah, I'm my. Uh, you could see why I would have to then go back to heartfulness and go wait. Right. Ah, I need a minute. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry to run on. So no, but. no, that's it's fa it's interesting because. I, yeah, I mean, I don't work in the corporate sector at all. You, know, you should be I, happy about that. Yeah, I, I am happy <laughs> about that. I've tried to do my best to avoid that. And, you know, there's just a lot of, uh, let's call it unscrupulous things that corporations do, which mm -hmm. part of it has a lot of a big influence in the world and government mm -hmm. because they pay. Yeah, that's right. They pay people in the government to make laws for for them to do the things for them to conduct business and mm -hmm. so <laughs> these organizations are really the ones that need the adesis um and yeah. the what did you call it? the spiro is it spiro dynamics yeah. spiro dynamics yeah no you're absolutely right you, you know and so it's fascinating that you were working in i don't know how what type of companies but that there are people who have who are corporate minded and not just like oh i'm going to come into your corporation and teach you all about reiki and it's like no it's what it, um 
I can't even, I can't even get that. I can't get it to stick in my head. The, uh, uh, the technical, intrinsic, yes. Intrinsic, the, intrinsic value. You like that intrinsic validation. I do because it's like, I was like, you're describing like, oh, oh, you mean meeting people where they're at? Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. I'm being, I'm being the folksy person. Oh, right, right. That's a very academic way of saying right. it. Exactly. Very, right. Exactly. Validate. Yeah. Yo, you mean meeting people where they're at? Yeah. You said right. it very clearly, right? Right. <laughs> Yeah, Taking, it, but that's what it means. But that's what it means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's fascinating. And so I, I can, you know, know because I didn't, you know, we just know each other from just the running community. into, yeah, right. just running right. into each other. And I, mm -hmm. I knew that you, you taught Kung Fu and, and did something with, uh, w w did something a lot with business, something yes. very esoteric they call it yeah esoteric in business right. that when was i go in the meetings they go oh god he's this is the guy with the esoteric bullshit right that's what they <laughs> say about me <laughs> but, yeah. well, see, but see i didn't know that because to me you, you it's like a very professional um mm -hmm. uh i i don't know demeanor that you that you give off the way the way you carry yourself so i just like mm -hmm. oh yeah he works and he does something okay. important <laughs> with companies i i don't really know what that is i don't know what that um but what you're doing is you're cloaking your you're ninja <laughs> you're that's right that's you're a ninja that's of right. compassion that's right no you're absolutely right you guys what we see is you're absolutely right you know <laughs> because we have to go in in stealth mode right you can't come in and say hey i'm here i'm here to help you change right you're not right right that's just not how you open up you gotta, right you got to go in very slowly and i'll tell you i've had some really rewarding experiences i'll tell you this one real corporate story that shows you how how it combines right right which you'll see in the story the element of intrinsic uh, excuse me not intrinsic validation but centering the the peaceful confidence the other thing we talked about peaceful confidence so i what the very first time i was on my own to do uh, uh one of these programs change program I go in, it's 24 people, 25 people, something like that. And I'm going opening my spiel, telling them what we're going to do, blah, blah, blah. And some guy raised his hand and said, you know, sir, I'm sure you're very good at what you do. <laughs> you know, so I had a, I had an illustration on the, on the screen that showed a life cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Person grow up, they teenager, they become productive. They're very uh, productive and then they get stable and then they get kind of, you know, stayed and, bureaucratic and this is the organizational life cycle right. just like people who have a life cycle organizations have a life right. cycle True. and at the end of the life cycle after bureaucracy autocracy and all this there's death so he says to me with all due respect i'm sure you're good at what you do but you know on your curve right there you're showing us you see the one on the bottom right after the curve goes down where it says death he says we've been there twice so i really with all due respect, I just don't know what you can tell us because we've been there twice. Now, they had been downsized, if you know the term. Mm -hmm. In corporations, they start firing people, right? They had went through two downsizing. They went from 170 people down to like 110. And by the time they brought me in, there were like 40 people in the organization. Wow. That's why he said, you see that? We've been there twice. So what are you going to tell us? With all due respect, what can you tell us? And I'll tell you this, Chanel. At the end of those two days... People were crying. I kid, I kid you not. You know why they were crying? They were crying because they realized, oh, we can take responsibility, design hope in our processes and efforts so that we, as human beings and people, are acknowledged in the situation. Okay, as an organization, you got to do what you got to do, but I have to do what I have to do to maintain myself. And what, what we show them is ways and means that you guys can collectively Old hands to cross the street, so to speak. Mm. And I was blown away because I was brand new at this. I, ooh. I went back, I called the Adesis Institute, said, hey, listen, I got a real situation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it just so happened, one of my colleagues who was from Serbia had just gone through the Serbian war. Mm. And she wrote uh, a paper on coming back from death. And, and I used her paper to kind of orient myself and just did the methodology, you just do the methodology, which is why it's so important to have a methodology, you know, whether it's meditation, change management, martial arts, there's nothing as powerful as a good methodology that's been proven. And uh, Adisa has been around for 70 years or something like that. 
small, very small, but very, very effective and worldwide. You know, I mean, they got like 20 offices around the world. It's not big like Deloitte, Touche. I mean, not, they're not big, you know, like Boston Consultant. But although Boston Consultant tried to buy them once, you know. So on the, in the industry itself, they're well known. But I just, that was a very rewarding experience. And that's when I realized, because like you said earlier, if the world is going to become what's next for it, and Inspire Dynamics, Inspire Dynamics, uh, so interesting because it's color coded. I look at the chakras behind you there. Mm -hmm. Inspire Dynamics is color coded. Now, it didn't borrow from the chakras, but it's interesting. It's an interesting corollary. Mm. Uh, and and what the takeaway was was that the only way the planet can heal and be better is that we have to rein in and transform corporations to have a soul. They have no souls. They're like yeah. zombies. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, it's, it, you know, it's fascinating talking about that. It's, it's, well, it's just what they value, right? How yeah. they were brought up. Maybe they were brought up very wealthy and it's like, well, this is what you do. You just take mm -hmm. over shit. You just That's take right. over. You don't care about these people. I'm going right. to put my pipeline here. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck mm -hmm. about your right. water. Like, who cares? Well, it's There's a value thing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. it, and, and if all you value is success and money at the expense of the well-being of of the community, you you it, it, to the degree those things are in clash. You know, at some point now, the one thing with spider dynamics integral, I'll tell you this, is that the theory underlying theory suggests as life gets more complex, the human uh, being or the 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 collective human being, if you will, begin. We will the the capacity to deal with the next level of complexity turns on like Christmas tree lights, because innately in our brain, the brain syndicate amongst us all is when it shit hit the fan, we all go, okay, all right, we can no longer, absolutely no longer keep doing this like that. Now, hopefully we'll get, we won't have to wait for a major war, nuclear explosion. Of course, we just had the pandemic. So the complexity of life is showing up for real. The challenge is, does the human and the human mind brain syndicate, if you will, all of us together and individually, are we able to rise to the level to deal with that next level of complications? Because this is how businesses go out of business. When the external environment is so complex, it just smothers your company and you can't deal, you go out of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And that's just a fact. Yeah. So building in the capacity to be resilient and anti-fragile is, is, is the work there. But the reason for the work, the transcendent purpose, as we say in Spiral Dynamics Integral, the transcendent purpose is the well-being of the planet. That trumps everything. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Now, everybody that may not realize that. And, you know, we go back to intrinsic validation. You go, in, <laughs> you go into a corporation where they all, the color orange is the color we talk about with greed and stuff like that. I mean, each value system could be manifested positively, productively. Each value system could become cancerous and right. unproductive. Right. The content is immaterial. It's the construct. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. I don't really get so philosophical, but but that's the deal. You know, because you know, any you could have a person who's really into community, but then they become cancerous on the community itself because they they close their system down. This is all we need to be. This is the problem you see with a lot of the uh a lot of folks who are let's just say traditional americans all right people who feel that we do not need to change we right. need to things conservative right they're not open conservatives they're closed-minded and, and you can be closed-minded to be any persuasion you know anyway that's a it's fun stuff for me you know yeah but the community i'm plugged into globally it's called the living living cities earth and uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting coalition of people. A lot of really, really well-intended. And it's global. I would like to see more of the Southern Hemisphere get involved. There's, for instance, there's no folks from Africa, South America, or uh, South Central Asia. So what is that? What is the purpose of Living Cities Earth? Is it, is it, is it to keep, peop keep humanity from destroying each other? <laughs> or like... Well... That's a good question. The premise is the way to make a difference is to 
focus on the cities saving the world, so to speak, as opposed nation states, eh, they got a role to play. Institutions like medicine and the military, all these institutions, they play a role. They play, they play a very big role. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but when you when you look at the cities in the world, there's over ten thousand cities in the world with cities that are five hundred thousand or more, and then you got all the little towns and everything right. else, right? So there, the premise is, and I should have this more internalized, but I've only been involved for three months with them. The premise is, we look to change the world. We are looking; they're working on getting a hundred founding uh, uh, members. I'm one of the founding members, so they want a hundred a hundred founding members to also reach a hundred thousand influencers. Uh, to eventually get to a point where there's a million people that have been touched in some way, shape, or form by the work of Living Cities Earth that trumpets, that's trumpeting, if you will, the goodness of cities being the catalyst for positive change. And then uh, from that 100 people who are founders to 100,000 people who are influencers, to a million people who have been touched by the organization in the first year to uh, eventually 10,000 cities having an element of it there. So I'm not explaining it really well, but they had a really well laid out thing. If you go to Living Cities Earth website, it's just beginning. We're just on the, they, they existed. I was called by a couple of folks from Canada. Of course, I was flattered and said, hey, we're coming in from Canada. We'd like to talk to you, Daryl. One of my Spire Dynamics colleagues, a woman named Marilyn Hamilton, uh, who did a wrote a book on the integral city. Mm. You know, integral is integral is the is the Ken Wilber methodology, right. which says he, what's important is to focus on the intention, the I, I me my, or excuse me, I we it, you know, me, all of us, and then the planet or something like that. Anyway, Marilyn introduced me to these people. They came to Ohio and sat down with me and we, we, we hit it off. So I said, sure, I'm a joiner. You're not joining. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll join. And then next thing you know, I'm on all these teams. Like, wait a minute, I really have too much to do already. So, but anyway, <laughs> I am, it's kind of like a very inspirational group. You know, there's right. no money, nothing like that. It's just something I care about. You know? Right, right. It's about well, it. it's, it, it's interesting because, um, there was an organization I remember going to a meeting, something, I, it was similar to Living Cities and mm -hmm. where uh, we tried to get together in Ojai and meet because there was some some sort of initiative like that where cities could be, a, if, they could, so. yeah, uh, if they could organize and make a, a, a change that you have all these model cities doing, you know, things mm -hmm. that are you know environment you know the triple bottom line right which is right. environment people planet people purpose something purpose, like that. yeah right. <laughs> yeah the triple bottom line it's a big yeah spark dynamics is big into that yeah right so it's important and oh is a great place for that kind of stuff you know i think anyway how, how did it go well it well nothing happened <laughs> You need, I think we needed you to come in because, I mean, there's always great intentions, but then there's, you know, there's kind of no follow through. And so, um, so, so, yeah. So, I, so I'm just, what I'm, this is, okay, so this is what I'm, this is what I am, and I kind of want to get back into, you know, confidence and whatnot, but mm -hmm. like just, I'm just thinking about, you know, the train explosion in Ohio and yeah. how they're, sh <laughs> they're shipping those chemicals into somewhere i forgot what city in texas the and ones just, yeah the, yeah it was on the way to texas or you say they no no up they the had they had to take they had to remove those chemicals oh. and put them somewhere else mm -hmm. and so i guess the governor because somebody greased maybe you know i mean you know how that stuff works somebody mm -hmm. paid somebody said okay yeah we'll just just put it here we'll we'll we'll, we'll bury it like five hundred thousand feet into the i don't know <laughs> They're just gonna bury it somewhere in Did that community of death? outside outside of Houston or Dallas. No, and I'm just like, what is? I haven't really gone because it's just I can't. I just can't yeah. deal with it. That's a, that's a but, serious intractable problem. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, okay, so these living cities are. I don't know. I mean, you know, like who? 
who said that was okay? Because I'm sure those people living next to wherever that landfill is going to be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and maybe 30 years from now, you know, like, oh, well, let's just bury it and uh, right. put a school here. And now everybody's got two heads. Right. right. Put yeah. a, put a, you know, uh, build homes here. Like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, no, so, yeah, there's just, <laughs> there's just, I mean, I mean again, like, it, what it is, that's the, uh, where, where companies, because apparently that same train company has had a couple of incidents like this. But when you take companies and governments and they sort of collude like that, you know, and nobody calls them out, catches them or highlights it with big flashing lights or something. Once again, 20 years down the road, you'll find, oh, all the kids attending that elementary school. Oh, what? It was built on top of the dump where they. Yeah. And is, you know, there's so many ills in the in the world, you know, you could get bogged down with oh, admiring, gosh. admiring the problem. You know, I have a, my stepdaughter is like, as far as she's concerned, she just graduated, you know, and she's just, she's an idealist. And she's just like, this is just, this, this, this is just, the whole thing needs to be blown up and start over again. Like, wow. <laughs> okay. Well, she might, she, that might happen. <laughs> yeah. That's a, no, no, no. We, we, she said, I don't know how you think you could change it from the inside, Daryl. It doesn't work. I'm like, well, you know, we'll see. But one, it's one by one. I mean, it's, well, it's people that like you, like um, the founder, Azidas, Ken Wilbur, mm -hmm. you know, all these people who are, have these organizations and are trying to implement that i mean i don't know mm -hmm. if anyone's gone into exxon or bp or you know these big huge congl i mean they're just so all they're right we worked at conoco for a little bit you know to say we we made the mission of conoco to save the planet we made it their mission mm -hmm. because i'm going to tell you now in about 50 years if you might lose half of those uh fossil fuel companies but the smart ones are going to make the transition right. because they are closer to the solution than they are to the problem. They are as close, I'll put it like this, they are as close to, to the solution as they are to the problem. Right, 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 right. And if, if, if they have smart leadership, and this is how Sparta Dynamics work, if everybody in your company is orange or all involved and in, interested in success, real leaders are not there. They're a couple of levels complexity above that which is to say they understand the human dynamic and the planetary dynamic and will guide that, that very success oriented value system to become more open right. to the next possibility. And the next right. possibility by definition is to be more people friendly. And once you have people friendliness on top of the success, because you don't lose that value. Once you have that value intact, the philosophy and the theory is once that value is intact, you don't lose it. You just transcend to mm -hmm. the next thing that makes sense. And after you've been successful, for instance, everybody involved with Living Cities Earth are very successful people in their own right. And now they go, huh, is this it? Is this, is this it? And they come to the Should I build a rocket to go <laughs> into <laughs> to See, the stratosphere? He's, <laughs> he's still in this orange space there, you know. <laughs> and you got you got people. Let me tell you what, you have people in the orange space who will be healthily orange and they may not ever leave that value system. But for those who can and think that it makes sense, they will. And right now, the planet in general, you're having more and more people move into the space of appreciation, appreciating humans. The problem with that is what you experience. Once you are all in that space and it's a kumbaya thing, there's nobody there to make decisions. And we're all holding hands, we're in our circle, but yes, we need to save the planet, but nobody's taking action, mm -hmm. which, which is, it was useful to get there, but is that it? And so there's always the next thing. And, and right. this is fascinating, you know, I'm gonna do a session in Sparta Dynamics here and I'll invite you to it because it's so rich, you know, but it's dense, it's a little bit dense. But, but the, the takeaway of it is, is this, as life conditions become more complex for people to deal with, what happens in the spiral dynamics theory is you oscillate from express self to sacrifice self. And you, you, you mm -hmm. do that, that oscillation as you spiral up the levels of complex uh, uh, thinking, you know, and, and it's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. So, so when per folks are holding hands singing Kumbaya because we're all people and we know it, but like you said, nothing happened because, because they beat down the success 
thing so much. Right. Like, we don't want you in the room. You can't be in a room. But the fact is, we need each other. Everybody, they need to bring their stuff because no one has a corner on the truth. Right, right. right. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's funny because so I'm originally from Nepal and I had moved back and mm -hmm. I, there's, you know, that country has so many amazing uh, resources that mm. is just being, and it's it's a very poor country. I don't think I don't think we can say third world, but I'm going to say it because I'm mm -hmm. from there. And I can say it. it's a, it's a third mm -hmm. world country. They call it now developing country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, no, it's not developed if you're still, you know, Sorry, explo just, explo exploiting labor, right? Mm -hmm. Exploiting labor. Um, there's no running water. You know, you, there's no healthy, clean water. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always said, you know, we, you know, just being, being there and just how, you know, I mean, all governments are most, most, if not all governments have a lot of corruption and you mm -hmm. see this even more blatantly in, in smaller countries like, like Nepal, cause it's mm -hmm. very clear. And, and I, I, I always say, you know, like the only thing, like what, what's it, we, we would talk, talk, I would talk about with this with my uncle and my, you know, my friends, like what, what's it going to take to, to change Nepal, to, to get mm -hmm. this government to change? Because, you know, not, it wasn't too long ago, like about 25, almost 30 years ago, it was a monarchy mm -hmm. and they had a revolution mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a constitutional democ, uh, no. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. That. Constitutional democracy, no. Well, what, well, it's what, what is England because they have a parliament. Oh, they have a parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So but, they still had the monarchy. No, oh no, it's just a parliamentary. system. No, the monarchy is gone. It's a okay. yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a. But they have something like Israel. So my, uh, this this just yeah, there's uh, a parliament. You you vote people in. There's no president. Um, I Anyway, prime minister or, yeah there's a prime minister anyway so but what i said is like they need they need to do some deep psychological work because they're not doing anything but for their own self-interest and to keep you know to keep their generational wealth within their and it doesn't go outside of yeah. any anyone else because you know i mean there's pollution is rampant i mean like who gets there's certain yeah. times of the year where you where um the trash gets so bad. Uh, there's a cholera outbreak, right? Yeah, like once, once or twice a year, and it's just wow. what what is going on? And it's not like that can't happen in the U.S., but it's just like what what year are right. we but, in? But no, but it is. And, see, and yeah. so that's that's why that's where these the these institutions and the work that you and I do are why they're so important because yeah, you got to change from within in order to make those ripples. Into right, the one world. at a time, but, right. but but somebody needs to deal with it at the systemic level too. Right. And like, so if if this little movement that I'm plugging into, Living City Earth, is to make a difference, they want to move in in some place like Nepal and see if they could craft something. You know, let the let the folks who have all the stuff keep their stuff. But can you give us a minute to work with the people who need need stuff? Yeah, basic and human if, needs. Yeah, and if you're not losing your stuff. Just don't interrupt us from helping them get a little something. <clears throat> right, it's right. just amazing um, how how much work that tends to be. World problems aside, and that's the reason that's the driver, but behind the, why you do the why you mm -hmm. have done the work you've done on such an incredible scale, might I say? That's what I was yeah, just like. You. Wow, that's really. Imp I know <laughs> you're you. not doing it to be impressive, but I I just I was looking at the Adidas website and I was like I was like oh my guys you know the just the technical jargon i'm like right. what <laughs> but that's where you learned reiki yeah. and i'm like oh yeah. that just you know shifted yeah. my whole perspective on who they are mm -hmm. as a graduate school and what they're trying to do and so so throughout this whole through line comes um it is your your personal confidence like you are such a confident person and and you're a confident corporate, I mean, maybe, you know, corporate healer is what you are. That's a good way. That, that's what Adesis considers them. You know, they, Adesis practitioners consider themselves corporate therapists. That's yes. what they, that's their little moniker. Yeah. yeah. And it's unique. It a lot is. of corporations will not admit they got a problem. Right. They, they will not. Because if they do, they feel they'll be penalized in the market. Right. But when, when, if they're enlightened, they'll appreciate somebody like a, a decent practitioner coming in you know 
Right. They, they like to say they're not consultants, they're insultants. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like insulting, like, or you mean in, or you they're mean like tell, insult? They're going to tell the company about itself for real. Now right. they might get fired after right. they insult the company. Right. They just hired them. <laughs> but they make sure they get their contract intact first. Yeah. So where, where does that drive, like, were you, and this is what's fascinating about martial arts, because, uh, about instilling like peaceful confidence, because mm -hmm. when you do something, get involved in some sort of organization um, like that, whether it be, I, I don't know, it seems like movement sports, mm -hmm. something that moves your body, it, that embodied confidence, it, it carries through in so many, and, and it doesn't mean that, you know, it's, all you know people are always 100 percent confident it's always it's not always at 10 it, it wavers but for right. some people maybe it, it doesn't waver all the way down and if mm -hmm. it does it's you know it's a confidence is a dynamic thing so how where do you think your confidence came from oh, also you know i don't know but i i realized i took an assessment once i know you're familiar with 360 degree assessments you ever heard of this i you know i took I took us not I there was a there's a few assessments that I've taken. I'm recently. taking them all. Okay, right? I've, I've but I've not heard of all. 360. Well, 360 degree is another corporate assessment where they they ask some of your subordinates, they ask some of your colleagues at their same level, and they'll ask your bosses above you. How's Daryl functioning in the in the environment? And somewhere along the line, you you rate your and then you rate yourself, right? It's kind of embarrassing, but so, every, you know, generally I was okay, but everybody had me for like, like say on one to 10, Daryl's a seven, right? Every time mm -hmm. anybody else said Daryl's a seven, I said I was a nine. Mm -hmm. So I realized, oh, I have a blind spot. I am basically overly confident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too confident, you know? And, and, so, and so that was fascinating to me. So I don't know. I don't know the answer to where that comes from. I just don't know, you know, mm. I, um, I don't know, you know, when I was young, when I was a kid, I always wore glasses, you know, I don't have my glasses on now, but I remember my, my mom, my aunts and uncles and everything, they would always, oh yeah, Daryl's so smart, you know, and so I think probably maybe from that, I guess, I don't know, I don't know, that's a good question, I've just, I've always been confident and I can't tell you why, mm. you know, I'm not particularly super good looking, super tall or super smart. In many ways, I'm just a regular dude, you know, um, but I think I learned somewhere along the lines. And this is when I met Dr. Beck. I really, when I met Dr. Beck, uh, like in 98, I was just finishing my master's or something like that. And when I met him, in fact, I met the Adesis guy where I eventually went to graduate school. He was in the same workshop with me with Dr. Mm. Beck in San Francisco. And, and Dr. Beckett heard, is the spirodynamic. Yes, founder of Spirodynamics. I, I, so we were in, in the same guy. So interesting how life just blends because right. Sunil Devedi was also the guy who introduced me to uh, heartfulness. So we've just had our lives intertwined ever since. And, um, and I would say my newfound confidence that really took off probably occurred right about the time and when I met Dr. Uh, Beck because he opened up a whole nother world to me. And, um, and then I realized at that time, I said to myself, okay, now I know. Now I know what my destiny is. It's mm. a good thing when you go, ah, this, this is my destiny. So Spar Dynamics made all the difference in the world to me across the board, whatever it is. You know, it even influences my Kung Fu, you know. So, so yeah, I think that was a shift. That was a, that was a noticeable shift, in my opinion, about my confidence. Now... <laughs> I took that assessment and I was <laughs> I was so off the chart. I'm like, ooh, I better I better go get some therapy and bring that down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's helpful sometimes, though, you know. Right, it's right. Helpful. Keep yeah, keep your well. I mean, I I mean, I think that says it right there, right? That you are open to uh, open to changing, mm -hmm. you know yourself like oh i well i feel confident I'm like oh well i guess i guess maybe i'm a little over too overconfident maybe i should do something about it. where 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 most people are like they don't know what the fuck they're talking like right that's right and that's, that's a sign that okay you need to go do some work on yourself right you know? right you go because the attitude matters you know so but no yeah it's a good question you know i, I really didn't, didn't ponder that one you know because 
like you said, if you're centered and you're confident, you're not threatened, you know? You're just not threatened. And if you've done any kind of meditative work, Reiki, whatever healing thing you've done, it, I believe it helps your self-awareness. And people who are effective in life come from a place of being relatively self-aware of their pluses and their minuses. Mm -hmm. Like I never had a problem paying a consultant more money than I got made than I made because whatever that he or she brought to the game, I realized I need that right now. I don't care what the price is. They need to be involved with this. A lot of people won't do that. A lot of people say, wait, wait, I'm not hiring anybody that's right. going to make more money than me. Mm -hmm. But again, that's a value system. Right? right, right. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, that I was just thinking, you know, I've met so many people on this journey, you know, working with people with, you know, doing Reiki and intuitive energy healing. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, they come to me because they're at a crisis, right? And it's a, mm -hmm. it's a purpose, like what right. I, I, I just don't want to do this work anymore. I mean, I, all the people that I have talked to interviewed on this podcast came from the corporate world and got into some sort of mindfulness or, you know, some mm -hmm. sort of spiritual work that now they're doing because that's what resonates. That's who they are. Right. And so here you are, you know, you kind of walked into, you know, doing all this, um, you know, keeping that through line with what you've learned through your martial arts and that, um, or what would, what do we call it? Co uh, peaceful confidence and, mm -hmm. and understanding, you know, you know, how, you know, how to, you, when you study, hopefully when you study martial arts, uh, you know, it's not about the conflict. It's not about, you know, how high your kicks are, how, you know, how it's, a, it's about your mental and spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. what i i'm not a martial but that's it's, no it's very much that yeah know yourself right you want to know yourself and it gives you awareness to avoid situations so i mean you know i'm a i'm a believer in that if you're the sixth sense has been developed in your martial arts you avoid situations that put you at risk you just avoid it you're not right. there that's right. the real that's the real masterful thing is that okay i will not be in that vulnerable situation i may be vulnerable in some ways i mean in some ways i may be a vulnerable human being but i will not avail myself to being injured in that area i mean if that makes sense you know right if, yeah no absolutely you but what, I, six sense. what i was saying is that but you've stayed in the corporate world because you're a court because you're a secret healer <laughs> I mean, like, that's what's so fat. I'm like, wow. Like, you know, most people are like, oh my, I can't this, I don't want to be an attorney anymore. I don't want to be a, I don't want to be CEO of this. I, I don't want to do, oh God, I'm going to start my own company and, you know, right, and right. do this and whatever. And, and they'll and run they, right up into it again. And they leave it, you know, but, but you have, because it's just fascinating that, you know, how, um, yeah, it's just serendipity. Like, oh, and then mm -hmm. you met, that's where you met Jesus. And then um, the, the Spyro Dynamics guy, you know, and getting into these, um, learning these, as you call them, method all, but learning these teachings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about how to, about how to get people who work in companies to move the, their internal needle from like whatever greed and, you know, jealousy to, mm -hmm to being more in community and being more, I'm going to use the word mindful, but being yeah, more right. mindful, uh, conscientious right. about w their actions and how it's impacting other people and not creating a toxic work environment and not putting toxicity out into the world. And it's still there. Trust yeah. me. You know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have know clients it's still there. right now like, Oh God. <laughs> yeah. It's still there. You just kind of like, yeah, it's amazing that it's still there, but it is. It's just so well, I'm s And I'm glad that you haven't given up because if you did, then we be... <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to fight the good fight. You yeah. Know? My yeah. goodness. Like that's, just, <laughs> that's just incredible. You know, like, wow, he's still working in the corporate, you know, because, because of, of, because you believe in the goodness of people and like, okay, you're here and doing this, let's put the soul, like you said, let's put the soul back into this, yeah. you know, corporation. Um, and it's the work. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It, it is. And that's what, yeah, that's what, that's why we, we are doing what we're doing. So what, what is next for, for you? What is mm -hmm. your next? Um, you know, uh, so I am, uh, probably for me, 
Dr. Beck passed away last year. Oh. And I mean, he lived a good long life and his son would like me to take over his company. I, I, I'm interested in that. Spiro uh, Dynamics? Yes. Wow. The Spiro, the Spiro Dynamics group. They all think like I'm the heir apparent, but everybody's, there's a lot of people doing Spiro Dynamics stuff. So I'm, I would just be one more person in the chorus of let's make a difference. And so probably what's next is to um, continue to be involved with the community. We're all now having to go forward without Dr. Beck. And that's what we're doing. And uh, so what's next is I'm shifting my energy, time, and attention to more Sparta dynamic stuff. Mm. But I can only do that because of the well-being I receive from my martial arts community. It's just a very strange thing to say. Oh. But I have to have that to be whole. Then I can do other things. And so Sparta dynamic is a higher calling for me. But I can't get there unless I take care of my body and my mind in my community, so to speak. Right, so right. What's next is the unknown uncertainty around how do we now maneuver without Dr. Beck? Right. Well, that's what you, well, you, fortunately you're a doctor in, in transformation, transformation yes. of change or transformation yeah. organization. <laughs> should, you would think I'm be ready for it. We'll see. I, oh, I think, I think, I think you, you, you are ready for it. I, it, it's fascinating too, that, you know, the, like, so for you, self-care is Kung Fu. Is this, is mm -hmm. your, is this Kung Fu? That's community? the way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. It is. Let me put it into my terms. No, self-care is very important. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's right. That's true. That's very apropos. That's what it is. I didn't realize it, but that's what it is. Yes. That's, uh, I think it's well said. Yeah. And then what you, and so it seems, it sounded to me like, I was like, oh my God, he's teaching them self-care <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in your, in your organization, in your, with, uh, with the work that you do, mm -hmm. uh, in the, or with the work that you've done in the past and will continue to do is teaching people to take care of themselves so that they don't burn out. Right. And, and, and so they don't, right. yeah. 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 Because you don't want to go into a caustic situation. I mean, it debilitates people to go in knowing that they have to go into work on guard. Oh, I, I gotta go. They, they, it's like, and it's then they terrible. leave. Yeah. They, right, right, it's terrible, it is. It is and I yeah. see it, I see it. And in my environment, that's not the environment, but you know, but we'll see. Yeah. But anyway, now I really appreciate being with you. This is yeah, great. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, yeah, it was, um, so more fast, just fascinating to learn more about you and like who you are and what you're about and the really amazing work <laughs> that you're doing in the world. Like, I'm glad I shared it with you because I've been wow. following your work and I'm like, all oh, right, she's doing her thing. It's very healthy, very active. You know, like I need to get modern like that, you know. So I'm, I'm glad to do this. Podcast. You are doing modern. What are you talking about? Like that's even more modern. Is you know trying to get people you know, more, more heartful, you know, me being more heart centered and coming from that place, um, instead of like this shell of like, well, I'm tough and I'm, I gotta, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. very masculine it's so way of doing things. Yeah. A lot of people are still doing it. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, being here today with us. There is, I, is there, um, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll put all the links of, Spiral Dynamics and Living Living Cities Earth. Living Cities. I can't read my writing That's here. Right. Living Cities too. Earth. Yeah. In you know, on on this episode uh, on the, the website. Mountain Institute. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'll put all that. So if I didn't realize I do all of that. Yeah. Which is why I've been, been I know seriously you... going thinking of going to India and taking a minute. <laughs> yeah, you should. I know. Oh, you yeah. should. It's it's yeah. I. Yeah. Why not? You yeah. know, because that's part of your self care too, right? Just to very much so. Regroup yeah. if you're being asked to step into, you know, taking care. You know, stepping into the spire dynamics and uh, yeah. organization and leading that. You maybe it's a good time to like. To, what, it is. Let's let, let's regroup and what wh what what is my value right now? What am I valuing right now in my life? Right. That's true. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, ah. so when I saw you, I was like, okay, yeah, this is good. <laughs> you know, I talked to Sunil. He said, "Daryl, you need to come to India." I said, "Yes, I am." Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Daryl, for being here in the company. Thank you, Shamal. So God bless you, and thank you so much. This was yeah. fun. This was fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
So thank you all for being here today and, and getting to know Daryl like I have and have a great rest of your week wherever you are in this timeline of listening to it. Thank you so much for listening to the Confident Healer podcast. My name is Sharmila Molly, and we will see you next time. Bye. Martial arts is a way of life. What I practice is courses useful for what I call peaceful confidence. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, it's a good means by which to be a part of a community. Peaceful confidence is as you get to center yourself, it's down to the point of when you're centered, and I learned this from a Aikido master. In Aikido, they have no punches, they have no kicks, there's no offense. In their philosophical leaning, and I'm not an Aikido master by any means, but I understand enough to realize the centering is very useful because in centering, if something comes at you that seems to be a, a threat or harm to you, you simply get out of its way and mm. you help it go where it needs to go mm. so that uh, you're not harmed. And that is fundamentally based on how centered you are. So 
peace of confidence is to know that I am centered, comfortable in my own skin, aware of my internal well-being, and aware of the external forces for which I have to deal every day with. Right. Not just and external forces can mean anything, not just a fight. <laughs> working with organizations and how that how that played a part how did that play a part and that must have influenced your oh, leadership style and it did you know my so in my work which is doing change management with organizations small groups large groups what does that mean uh, change, change management yeah okay <laughs> okay change management. i i, I, I I know, cause I'm like, well, okay, so you're managing change because change is always happening. So it's always happening. Yeah. Right. In my practice of what was called organizational change management, go into organizations, help them to deal with the external forces, bringing up, uh, impacting a group. So folks have an understanding and get clarity about how's that impacting us? And are we all on the same page? So organizational change management is really about constructive management of conflict. Mm. This conflict does not necessarily have to be negative, but it is energetic. You know what I'm saying? There's yes. energy. Yes. You have different interests, you have different styles, you have different intentions. And that means, I mean, people walk into a room and by themselves, not having anything to do with everyone else in the room, they walk in conflicted within themselves. So now multiply that by 25 people. Right, right. right. Okay. right. right. So this is how peaceful confidence shows up with that. Uh, there's two elements of it. One is, am I, as I am in the room, charged with facilitating organizational change management, what do I have to do? I have to validate the intrinsic right for an individual, an individual to be who they are mm -hmm. in the manner they are. Just that, nothing more, nothing less. I can't put my expectations upon them. I have to, what I call, intrinsically validate another human being's right to be who they are, act the way they are. Right, so meet, basically meeting them where they're at. Yeah, meeting them where they're at. Right. Right. Now, now, we have to put outside of that, you have bad actors who have ill, you know, faded intentions. And so I'm not talking about dealing with the pathologies Right. I'm telling you, the 80% of us who are just trying to work it out will show up and have some level of intrinsic validation as a person of, of goodness, so to speak.